Hello, this is Token VC. Welcome back to another review on the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tim and T V Lost Ronin V Lost Gears issue number one. And oh boy, this issue is really interesting in some areas of this issue, and then other areas, it's I don't really know the best way of describing it. I think that the best way of describing the actual main part of the issue with the seeing Mikey's story is sort of comparing it to the Black Widow film, where basically you don't really care about the story too much just because you already know how things are going to end, but you're just sort of curious to see how things did play out in a way. So I think that's like the best way of describing this whole issue, as well as this like, whole story in general. But I do think there are like other like parts about this issue which I do think are really interesting and so which I would really like them to actually develop and explore a lot more, uh, such as the future stuff as well as the flashback flashback stuff. Um, so yeah. Okay, so the first thing which I'd like to talk about is the future stuff, or the now stuff they're calling it, and it's interesting, just because we finally got a look at the four new brand new Tim and T, and it's really interesting. Now, I do think that the tales so far are a bit of a debate if they're actually going to be good or not, but I do think that because of toddlers, is like their personality is definitely going to change. But I do think that for now, there's only I think Yai is possibly the only good turtle in there as right now. I do want to be wrong and say that Alden will be good, but so far Yai is pretty much the only good one which I'm actually looking forward to see developed. All the rest are, uh, I mean, they're okay, just don't really have anything good going for them. But also the thing with this future bit is also the bit which I was most interested about and was the thing that really got me hooked onto this whole initial idea about doing the sequel stuff. And I do think that the whole concept of the brand new turtles being raised by KC and being trained and all that, that got me initially hooked onto the series and got me really invested in this whole story just because I felt so that there was so much to really tell this whole concept. I thought that this whole concept was a really interesting and unique idea and something which I would really like them to really explore and develop. Oh, actually, really, I mean, the thing is, what I, after going or after reading this whole issue, is this whole segment here is something which I'd actually like them to actually develop into like an ongoing series. As I feel as though this whole concept could honestly be one of the best things with Tim and T, as it's just so fun, unique, and very creative. And it's something we've never seen before, so it would be like very cool to see them do that in an ongoing series. But at the same time, we have been given it's okay, but. I know what I want and that's what I want and they're just teasing us and it's really annoying. But with the future stuff, I'm quite curious to see what else is going to be shown in future issues because if it's going to be as short as this with only being like a few pages long and it, like because also in like an interview, Ben Bishop was saying basically that in each issue we're going to be like exploring different like times basically because they're going to be growing up, like the future will be going one way and then go the other way. So I'm sort of curious to see how much it really gets developed and stuff like that. And I do think that this whole thing is really interesting. I'm just wondering just how much of it will actually be developed. Because I, I'm sort of hoping for it to be quite a lot. But if it's only going to be like four or five pages long in each issue, then I do think that it won't get the time that it deserves. Okay, so the next thing we shall talk about is the flashbacks within the flashbacks. And these... I'd say it's um, interesting for possibly the wrong reasons. So in these flashbacks we get to see the turtles, Mosbin and Mikey going after the foot and trying to stop them and I think I wasn't too sure if this is possibly when the turtles are getting invaded in their ho own home going to April's house in the, Lost, uh, in the Last Ronin series or this is when the turtles going off to Shredder to kill him. It wasn't really made too clear, but I'm guessing it's going to be when the turtles are going after Shredder. So yeah. Now the thing that was a bit weird for me was just how like Mustbinter's attitude within this issue. Just because Mikey, we see that he doesn't want to kill anyone, and that's really understandable for his type of character. But the thing is, is that Mustbinter just yells at him, saying uh, like, something along the lines of like "Hear me, boy," and stuff like that. And it was like really out of character for his character. Because when we look at the Lost Ronin in like issue number four, when he goes to talk to the person who's killed like half his family, and he's very peaceful at that point. And then in this issue, he just wants to straight up murder everyone. And he gets to the point where he just says basically, like, Mikey, you're not killing them, we're all killing them. And, like, that doesn't really make the situation any better. So, it just feels though that Splinter's character was, I don't know, it felt, like, really out of place for his character, not really in line with what he does in the Lost, uh, in, in Lost Ronin. 
So it felt a bit weird, but at the same time, I'm not too sure how much of this will actually be like diverting future issues and stuff like that because if this was going to be a ongoing thing within the actual series, then this could be an interesting thing. But I do think that they do, need, that they do need to really adjust the characters to really fit what they were like in the last Ronin. But yeah. Okay, now with the actual main story, and it's a, also a bit more interesting, I would say. This is because we start with Mikey going up to the mountains to go die, but then he realises after three years that he's still alive, so that's when he decides to actually survive. But then one day, some people come up the mountain, start to beat him up, and they kill him, or try to kill him, but that's when Mikey decides to basically, like, like rage out and just kill them, and he goes down the mountain, and he realises that these people are part of a bigger organisation, and they're burning down the village. So that's when Mikey lashes out again and starts to attack everyone, he kills them all, and I must admit, it was pretty cool to see this scene, to see Mikey just rage out, and it was quite cool, I won't deny that, it was, it was really interesting to see Mikey do this stuff. I know that he still did that in the last Ronin, but I'll just say that with the people actually being real people, and with how much he was killing them, it really did feel a bit out of place, or not, I wouldn't say out of place, but a bit weird to see it, but I, I can't deny it, it was really cool. But then we do have this one scene, which I must say, it was a bit weird, and I must admit, it did make me feel a bit uncomfortable. Just because we do have a man comes out and says, basically, oh yeah, there's this new big villain, he's going to be the main uh, villain of the series, called Death Worm. He's a murderer, he's a thief, he's, he's feared by the, pl uh, the police, the military. And then, you know, that's fine, because, you know, that's basically what every villain is, uh, the, like, you know, the biggest bad guy in the universe as of right now, and everyone's feared by them. But the thing is, is that the fact that he says that he's also a rapist as well. And this is the part that I would say was a bit weird for me. And I must admit, I don't think it was necessary for them to include this. To include this word to hype up villain, I would say is very weird and very wrong. Just because we really know that this villain is probably going to be like every other villain. But to include a word to hype him up, just it doesn't feel right and it feels very wrong to include it. Just due to what the word represents and with all the problems that it has to do with the real world, I'm very surprised that they decided to include it, even though it won't have anything to do with the actual story. And to hype it up as uh, to make it like as a way to hype up the villain, I'll say it's like very wrong. Just because we know that in the end Mike is going to defeat him, and this guy's probably not going to be as big or bad as everyone makes him out to be. But to use the word, it just feels wrong and unnecessary. And I feel so though that using the word without actually having any meaning to it, I don't. I hope they're making sense. I just don't think they should have included it because with all the problems it has with the real world and stuff. But then going to the final page where Mikey decides to go off and go kill uh, the Death Worm, and that's when his brother shows up and. Yeah, that's pretty much it where the issue ends. Now again with this little bit here, like I was saying at the beginning of the issue, this whole scene I thought though would have been like a oh my god, I can't believe that happened, I can't believe they're there type of scene. But the thing is is that because of the uh, last Ronin, we really, we already knew that the turtles would be showing up and from like descriptions for upcoming issues, we knew that this would be a thing. But the thing is is that I thought though this would have been a oh my god, I can't believe they're there type of thing if we didn't know about this in Lost, in Lost Ronin, so it did feel like, I don't know, anticlimactic, but the thing is, like I was saying with the Black Widow type thing, is that basically, we knew like, what was going to happen in the end, it was just more a case of, how did it happen, and just seeing it here, this, it just, it, you know, he just automatically just comes out with voices in his head, it just feels very anticlimactic, but it's an interesting thing, which I'm quite curious to see how he deals with it in the next issue, with him talking to his dead brothers and like maybe thinking they're not really there or something like that. I'm quite curious to see that, but at the same time, I just don't really care all too much with it, just because I already know what's going to happen in the end. So, yeah. Now overall with this issue, I must admit I did really enjoy this one, going back to this universe was just great, so many great things about this story, with the future turtles, and some other stuff within this issue, with Mikey going, like, raging out was just brilliant, I'm really curious to see what does happen next within this uh, universe, I'm really curious to see what happens with the future stuff, as I feel so that's the most interesting thing for me right now, with the past stuff, I'm sort of looking forward to it, but at the same time, like I've already said, it's something which I'm looking forward to, but at the same time, because I already know what's going to happen, I just don't really care all too much. But yeah, that's going to be it for today, guys. If you do like this one, please share, like, subscribe, and all that stuff. Goodbye, yo.
Bye.